Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about how you can integrate Swagger in your Web API project. Before I show you how you can do it, let's talk about why it is necessary to integrate Swagger in your project. So when we started the project, we decided to use Web API because, you know, most of the technologies can handle JSON as input and output so that we can have multiple front-end developers in Flutter, Xamarin, Android, Blazor, you name it. But I can't give my API just like this to these front-end developers, right? I will have to create some documents which will tell them what API to call, what kind of method it is. Is it a get method, post method, put method? If what kind of parameters it takes, you know, this method is taking two parameter, what kind of response you should be expecting. I will have to create all that documentation in order to give it to front-end developers so that front-end developers can use it. You can write all the document or you can use Swagger. If you integrate target Swagger in your ASP.NET Core application, then it generates all that documentation for you. It will create a UI, which you can give it to your front-end developers, which will show what kind of method it is, what URL they should go, what kind of parameters they can enter, what, and also they can, you know, see the response, the example value, the example response, which is coming back from this API. They can also go to schema to figure out what kind of objects they should make in order to send and receive the object from JSON. They can also test this API on that UI. So if they click on try it out, they can click on execute, you know, pass the parameters and then click on execute to receive the response back. They can also use post, put, delete methods and you can, you know, test those methods on Swagger too. So what do we need to do in order to enable Swagger in our ASP.NET Core application? So we need to do three main things. First, we'll have to enable a middleware which serves a JSON endpoint. And that JSON endpoint, we will have to generate using Swagger Generator. And then that generated JSON endpoint will be passed to UI Swagger UI, which will generate the UI for our front-end developers so that they know what APIs are available and what all parameters that they should pass, what kind of HTTP methods that they use. All the information is stored in that JSON endpoint. Okay, so let's get started. I have already, um, you know, have this API, which returns all the details about my publisher. So I would like to integrate Swagger in my web app, web app here. So the first thing that I would like to do, I should um, install this package. This package is dependent on Swagger, which enables the middleware, and then Swagger generator, which generates the JSON endpoint, and then Swagger UI generates the UI for our front-end developers. So the only thing that I need to do, I need to install this package. So I'm going to go to my package manager. I'm going to go to my package manager here and put this, uh, put this swashbuckle.aspnet core in my NuGet package manager. And here you can see that swashbuckle ASP.NET core, which is latest, it's 5.1, but you can install later than that. I'm going to install the latest one. And if I go to my output window, if I go to my output window, you can see that with, with that package, it installed Swagger with this package. It installed Swagger and it installed Swagger Generator and Swagger UI. Okay, so we have the package that we that we would like to use, um, use for enabling the middleware for JSON endpoint. So, like I said, there are three steps. The first step is to enable the middleware. Uh, to enable the middleware, I'm going to say app dot use um, use Swagger, and this will enable my um, uh, this will enable a middleware for my project so that Swagger endpoints could be served. 
Now that we have, we have enabled the middleware, we'll have to generate JSON endpoint. To generate a JSON uh, endpoint, I'm going to tell my services, I'm going to tell my services that we would like to add a Swagger generator. And that Swagger generator uh, will have to create a document, will have to create a document, um, which will be a Swagger document. So I'm going to say chase generator please create a swagger document and you can see that it takes two parameters one it takes the name and then it takes uh, this open api as an object so the way this document gets generated and, and the location that where it do this document gets generated um it looks um you can find the document here at swagger forward slash the version of the api that you're releasing and then swagger.json right so this is this is the path where this json endpoint gets generated and in order to create this json endpoint we'll have to pass that version name here in that string name parameter and the version name is version 1.0 my api is ready my content developers can use this so I'm going to say this is version one, and then we'll have to create an object of open API info, which where I'm going to pass two parameters. One is the title. One is the title, which the title of my API is book stores API. And the second parameter that I would like to pass is the version. Version is equal to Oh, version 1.0 right okay so I uh, we generated this open API um, info we know what's the version of our API now we should give this document this JSON endpoint to our Swagger UI so Swagger UI knows what to generate Swagger UI knows what all APIs are ready to get exposed so for generating uh, the UI, I'm going to say that app.use uh, swagger UI. And this takes UI parameter, which, uh, which uses the endpoint that we have just generated. So I'm going to say that, hey, UI, please use the endpoint that we have just generated. So I'm going to say UI dot swagger endpoint. And here I'm going to mention the the endpoint that we just generated, which is going to look something like this. I'm going to pass it here. And then uh, you should also name your endpoints. Uh, I'm going to name it as bookstores, bookstores API endpoint. Right? Sweet. So, yeah, and this is all you need to do in order to enable Swagger. And just like uh, three statements, you can enable swaggers for your ASP.NET Core web API. Let's run this. So when I run it, I'm getting an error. It is just, I'm gonna just run it again. There you go. So um, in order to get to swagger, uh, the way you can get to it is by, so the, this is your root. And here you say swagger, you say swagger, and it will go to your swagger UI. And here you can see that um, it shows the name of the API, bookstores API, uh, the version number that we entered, and then also it generates the document here, this JSON endpoint, which is swaggers forward slash version 1.0 swagger JSON. When I click on this, you can see that it generated uh, the JSON endpoint for all my APIs that I would like to expose to my my front end developers, and you can also select the endpoints that you from this drop down the endpoint that we have created. Um, and uh, yeah, let's test out our um, our Swagger UI here. So uh, I'm going to test this get publisher details where you can see that it's telling me everything about that API. It's telling me that it's a get method and uh, the location of the API is this and then you have to pass publisher ID as parameters and which will return 
uh, which will return response for you and you can know what to expect even without executing uh, executing this API. You can see that the example value should look something like this. And the schema should look something like this. This is pretty cool because I can, now I know what to catch this response in. I will create object, something similar to this, and then catch that response in my, um, in my object. You can see the relationship between the schema too. My publisher has books and users associated with it. Publisher has one to many relationships. So you can see this books and you can also find out schema of the book. You can also find out schema of the user so that we all know what to expect in the response. Okay, let's try it out. So if I click on try it out and pass publisher to as parameter and execute it, it will execute that API and return the response. It will tell you what curl command was used, the request URL, and the response in the body, the response header, everything about the response and request related to this API call. So this is get method. Let's let's try out a post method. So this uh, we have these roles in our application too. So I'm going to try this roles uh, post method. I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, yeah, I would like to try it out, uh, but I don't have to pass all this JSON. I could get rid of all this JSON and my, I know that my role only takes um, a role description. It does not even need a role ID. Um, I'm going to say this is a swagger role and say execute. And when I execute, you can see that it generated uh, a new role with role ID 17 and role ID, role description swagger role. So this is how you can use get, post, put, delete all the HTTP methods in swagger UI. You can test your UI, you can test your APIs and it also lists down all the, all the API related information in the school UI. Okay, so yeah, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter, Facebook, and I code live on Twitch. So if you wanna come and say hi, Please do. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.